So that is for providing connectivity between our IPv6 network that we actually own. But what if we need to provide with this internet access to anything or any subnet that's outside our own IP space, which is represented in this little orange circle right here. And this is where the BR or border relay router comes in. It's pretty much acts like a default gateway for your network. Or you can also look at it like a default tunnel router. So basically when the traffic hits the CE router, anything or any packet that destined to a destination that does not fall within IPv6 prefix that we own, it's going to be by default forward to the BR router. Assuming that BR router will know how to forward the packet to the rest of the IPv6 network. Okay, so that leads us to our task number two with the 6RD tunnel between CE and BR. So here we're going to attempt to provide the IPv6 connectivity from sites within our network to internet. So first we need to create a loopback 5 and 6 on that should be a R1 router, so it's a typo, using the IP shown in the diagram. And these interfaces pretty much represent the IPv6 internet. And then we need to configure the 6RD tunnel on R1 based on the IP information. And again, using the general prefix to configure the interface IP address and source the tunnel from the loopback zero. Same thing as for us configure the static route on R1 to get back to R2 and R3 loopback 5 and 6. And then we need to configure R2 and R3 to send out the IPv6 traffic that does not match our IP scheme and thereby consider being internet traffic to R1. And then we verify reachability back and forth. Okay, so as far as loopback address on R1, we're going to be configuring 2003-4222 and 2003-8888, both ends with 1 and slash 64. Okay, so let's get on to our R1 router. Configuring loopback 5, so interface loopback 5 with IPv6 address 2003-4222, just to kind of simulate the well-known IP address 4222 1 slash 64 and then uh, loopback 6 with the IP address or IPv6 address 2003-8888 1 slash 64 and then we continue on to configuring our general prefix 6rd prefix 6rd tunnel 1. So you guys should be familiar with the command syntax at this point since it's the third time that we need to configure this. With the tunnel 1 interface IPv6 address 6rd prefix colon clone slash 128. Tunnel sourcing from loopback tunnel mode IPv6 IP 6rd tunnel 6rd prefix 2003aabb slash 32 and then tunnel 6rd ipv4 prefix length of 16. Okay, we can just kind of easily copy and paste the config from R2 or R3. So for the static route, let's do that. So copy that from R2, paste and enter. So you can see with R1 being a BR router, that isn't a really a special configuration. So the configuration on the tunnel interface is pretty much identical to how you configure R2 and R3 being the CE routers. But now to let R2 and R3 know about BR or R1, we need to configure under the tunnel interface. So interface tunnel 1, the special command is tunnel. 6rd, the question mark, our third and last option that we have not used is BR. And here this is where you specify the BR IPv4 address, which is the tunnel source IP address. And that's R1 loopback 0 with 172.16.01. And then we need to provide the default route. So anything that does not match this static route right here that we already configured, 2003 AABB, we want that to be forwarded to our DR router. So command is IPv6 route with the default route sent to tunnel 1. And here we need to also specify the next top, which is 2003 AABB1, which is the IPv4 suffix of the R1 loopback 0, colon, colon, to kind of finish it off. 
and then same thing on R3 with interface tunnel 1, tunnel 6RD, BR, 1621601. Now let me just copy the static default route from R2 and paste it on R3. Okay, so let's go back to our Wireshark and restart before we do a ping. So now from R3, we're going to try to ping our internet or simulated internet IP address, which is 2003-4222, one sourcing from loopback 5. You can see we have a successful ping there. Let's also try the second test IP, which is 2003-8888, sourcing from loopback 5 or even loopback 6. Okay, same thing with R2. We're trying to ping 2003-4222, one sourcing from loopback 5. See those are pingable, 8888. Same thing there with the successful ping. And now if we stop our Wireshark, and let's try to find right here with our three sourcing loopback 5 with 2003 ABB311, pinging 2003-4222. And you can see right here with the IPv4 destination or tunnel destination IP of 1621601 as we configure as part of the static default route and the tunnel BR command and everything else looks pretty much the same. Here again going towards 2003-88881. Okay so you can see we just provide the ability for R2 and R3 to pretty much get out to our little simulated internet IPv6 network using the BR feature built into the 6RD tunnel which is not something that's available as part of the for example 6 to 4 tunnel. Okay, so we just verify which ability from R2, R3, loopback 5 and 6 to R1, loopback 5 and 6. So that's pretty much complete our task number 2. So now that we completed with the lab, you can see that with the 6RD tunnel, it's almost like a superset of the 624 tunnel where it gives you complete control of your own IPv6 IP scheme as opposed to being fixed to a 2002-16 prefix. And not to mention the ability for you to have a, a default router for your network as well to get out to the remaining IPv6 network. So there's actually a lot more benefit of using 6RD tunnel than the 6 to 4 tunnel. Yeah, and that wraps up our video on IPv6 6RD tunnel. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmates.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.